In the epic saga of human history, there were moments so terrifying, so close to the edge, we almost vanished forever. We're not talking about a few tough years, we're talking full-blown extinction-level events. Imagine this, every human on Earth fitting into a single sports stadium. Not a metaphor. That's how close we came to being a footnote in the fossil record. It's hard to believe now, with over 8 billion of us walking the planet, but our DNA doesn't lie. Hidden in the microscopic strands that make us who we are, there's a haunting record. Two near apocalypses where humanity came within a breath of disappearing. Twice. Not once. Only a few thousand people were left to pass on our species' legacy. And somehow, against all odds, we pulled through. But we didn't just survive, we were changed, forged in the fire of those ancient crises. So what the hell happened? How close did we really come to total wipeout? And the big question, could it happen again? To understand that, we've got to talk about one of evolution's nastiest survival tests, the population bottleneck. It's brutal. It happens when a species shrinks so fast and so hard that nearly all genetic variety disappears. Those few who survive? They're forced to rebuild from scratch, carrying only a tiny sliver of the diversity that once existed. Why does that matter? Because genetic diversity is nature's insurance policy. It's what gives life its backup plans. When disease strikes, when the climate flips, when predators rise, Diversity gives some a chance to fight back. Without it, a species becomes fragile. One bad cold, one food shortage, and boom, extinction. That's why scientists panic when endangered species fall into bottlenecks. Just look at cheetahs. They're dangerously low on genetic variety and one virus could end their story for good. And guess what? Humans, we've been there, twice. Need proof of how risky that is? Just look at the last woolly mammoths. After the giants disappeared from the mainland, a tiny group survived on Wrangell Island, off the coast of Siberia. But with so little genetic diversity left, they were sitting ducks, and eventually they vanished. We were standing on that same razor's edge, but we didn't fall. We clawed our way back, and we're still here. Why does that matter? because genetic diversity is nature's insurance policy. But make no mistake, the past is a warning. Because history shows us that extinction wasn't just possible, it was damn near guaranteed. There were fewer than 300 of them. That's it. A tiny, isolated group of woolly mammoths clinging to life on Wrangell Island. At first they held on, but over time, something invisible and unstoppable crept in. Inbreeding. Harmful genetic mutations. Little by little, their fertility dropped. Even their sense of smell started to fail. Eventually, survival itself became impossible, and by 4,000 years ago, they were gone. Extinct. Here's the terrifying part. That almost happened to us. Genetic research now confirms two moments in prehistory when humanity, our ancestors, walked the razor's edge of annihilation. Two near-death experiences where, if anything had gone just a little differently, you and I wouldn't be here. Humanity could have vanished without a trace. So, how close did we come to blinking out of existence? The first known genetic bottleneck happened roughly 900,000 years ago, long before Homo sapiens even walked the Earth. Back then, the planet was in chaos. Climate patterns were flipping, ecosystems collapsing. It was the kind of global instability that forces evolution to take sides. Then came a breakthrough in 2023. Scientists didn't need million-year-old fossils to figure out what happened. They used something much more powerful. The DNA of over 3,000 modern humans. Using a cutting-edge technique called Fit Coal, they traced the story locked inside our genes, reading the past not in bones, but in genetic echoes. And what they found was mind-blowing. 
Between 930,000 and 813,000 years ago, our ancient ancestors faced a catastrophic population crash. The total number of humans on Earth? Fewer than 1,280. To put that in perspective, that's less than the number of people on a single cruise ship. Not a city, not even a town. That's a village-sized population trying to hold on in a world falling apart. And this wasn't some short-lived crisis. Our ancestors teetered on the brink for over 100,000 years. Think about that. An entire chapter of human prehistory spent in survival mode, barely scraping by. We were one cold winter, one disease, one bad stroke of luck away from being lost forever. But how can scientists possibly know all this without ancient bones? Because DNA remembers. Just like tree rings can reveal a forest past, the human genome holds patterns, tiny shifts in genetic variation that act like timestamps. They show when populations grew, when they shrank, and how close they came to the edge. Thanks to tools like Fit Coal, we can read those genetic rings more clearly than ever. And what they reveal lines up with another clue, the fossil record. And it's only the beginning of what these hidden stories are starting to tell us. There's a strange silence in the fossil record, a gaping hole between 1.6 million and 900,000 years ago. Hardly any human remains. It's like a chapter ripped out of our story. Why? Because during that time, there were barely any humans left. So what unleashed this prehistoric catastrophe? All signs point to one major suspect, climate collapse. This was during a turbulent phase known as the early to mid Pleistocene transition. Glaciers expanded, global temperatures plunged, oceans cooled, droughts spread like wildfire. Whole species vanished, extinct, gone without a trace. And one hidden driver behind this domino effect might have been the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, an enormous ocean conveyor belt that helps regulate Earth's climate. When that system slows or stalls, disaster usually follows, and it's been tied to other ancient climate crises like the Younger Dryas, and it might have played a role here too. Now, imagine being one of our early ancestors in that chaos. No fire, no tools like we know them today, just survival raw and brutal, huddled in the cold, starving, watching your kind dwindle to fewer than 1,300 individuals and staying that way for over 100,000 years. But here's the twist. This wasn't just a population crash. It was a turning point in human evolution. Because during that same harsh window in time, something extraordinary happened in our DNA a freak genetic event, a chromosome fusion. You see, chimpanzees and gorillas have 48 chromosomes, but modern humans, we have 46. The reason is that two ancestral chromosomes fuse together, forming what scientists call chromosome two. And this genetic merger? It's one of the defining features that sets humans apart from our closest relatives. The timing is no coincidence. This fusion likely occurred right around the time of the Great Bottleneck. Some researchers believe it may have helped shape a new evolutionary path, perhaps even marking the birth of a new kind of human. Think about that. Out of a climate disaster and near extinction came one of the most important evolutionary shifts in our species history. We didn't just survive, we transformed. It's a reminder that in the darkest, most brutal moments, evolution doesn't stop. It rewrites the rules. In nature, bottlenecks don't just shrink populations, they reshape them. The few who survive aren't just fewer. They're different. Their genetics shift. And sometimes those shifts become permanent. It's possible that the first great bottleneck didn't just threaten our ancestors it may have set the evolutionary path that led to us. By the time our ancestors began to bounce back, around 813,000 years ago, something fundamental had changed. The survivors were genetically distinct, 
hardened, transformed, but they weren't untouched. Even today, if you look close enough, you'll find echoes of that ancient fight for survival hidden in our DNA, like scars written into our genetic code, passed down through a thousand generations. Now, jump forward in time to a more recognizable point in our story, the emergence of Homo sapiens. About 300,000 years ago, in Africa, modern humans appeared. Over time, we grew in number, explored new lands, and began to dream bigger, to look beyond the horizon. And that ambition would lead us into the second great bottleneck. For years, scientists believed it might have been caused by a single earth-shaking event, the eruption of the Toba supervolcano in present-day Sumatra. It happened around 74,000 years ago, right around the time we believe humans were migrating out of Africa. Toba wasn't just a big eruption, it was colossal, 10,000 times more powerful than Mount St. Helens. It blasted ash across continents and could have triggered a volcanic winter, plunging the planet into darkness and cold. According to the Toba catastrophe hypothesis, this event nearly wiped out early humans. But modern science has started to challenge that idea. Genetic data tells a different story. There's no sharp drop in global human diversity at that point in time, not the kind you'd expect if billions of people had vanished overnight. And in places like East Africa, the heart of early Homo sapiens, there's no strong evidence of a prolonged, devastating climate collapse following the eruption. So if Toba didn't cause the second bottleneck, what did? The answer, as always, might be more complex and far more human. The second bottleneck didn't explode onto the scene like a super volcano. It crept in, quiet, slow, and just as deadly. Between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago, small bands of Homo sapiens began to leave Africa. Not in one grand migration, but in waves. Some successful, others short-lived or doomed to fail. And that's where the second great bottleneck took hold. These early pioneers didn't pack up with large, genetically diverse populations. They ventured into the unknown with the bare minimum. And genetic evidence tells us just how razor thin their odds were. A 2015 study analyzing maternal and paternal lineages across 51 global populations came to a jaw-dropping conclusion. The founding populations that gave rise to every non-African person alive today may have included as few as 25 women and 15 men. 40 people. That's it. Every language every culture, every face outside of Africa traces back to a group smaller than a classroom. Let that sink in. Now imagine their reality, stepping into strange, hostile lands filled with new predators, new diseases, new climates, with barely enough genetic tools to adapt. They were walking evolutionary tightropes, one brutal winter, one deadly virus, and entire lineages could vanish. And some did. But the ones who made it? They did so through intelligence, resilience, and maybe a little luck. And as they spread across the planet, they carried those narrow gene pools with them. That's why today, the richest human genetic diversity still lives in Africa, our species cradle. And it gradually decreases the farther you move from that homeland. To really grasp how extraordinary our survival was, just look at our closest cousins, the Neanderthals. For hundreds of thousands of years, they ruled Europe and Western Asia. They were strong, smart, skilled. They thrived in the cold. They made tools. And yes, we even interbred with them, proof that some of their DNA still lives in us. But they didn't make it. Why? Not because of one sudden disaster but because of slow grinding decline, a death by demographic collapse. Genetic studies show the Neanderthals had dangerously low diversity. They lived in small, isolated pockets, trapped. Inbreeding was rampant. Harmful mutations piled up. 
A 2019 study of 13 Neanderthal skeletons found rare congenital deformities, evidence of serious inbreeding stress. Another study, analyzing their inner ear structures, revealed a sharp drop in genetic variety near the end of their existence. They didn't vanish overnight, they faded, caught in a downward spiral they couldn't escape. But Homo sapiens? We had one priceless advantage. Africa. When small groups ventured into Eurasia and faced hardship, there was always a larger, more genetically diverse population back home. A biological backup, a source of new ideas, new genes, new strength. The Neanderthals didn't have that. No vast homeland, no safety net. Alone in the frozen wilds of Ice Age Europe, they were vulnerable, and eventually they disappeared. But we endured. And the reason we're here today is because our ancestors didn't just survive extinction, they outlasted it. In the end, it wasn't brute strength, high-tech tools, or even raw brain power that saved us. It was something far more subtle and powerful. Diversity. Our survival didn't come easy. The human story, as unshakable as it feels today, is built on close calls and narrow escapes. First came the crash. 900,000 years ago, when our entire lineage nearly vanished, reduced to just 1,280 individuals. Then, 50,000 years ago, a handful of bold souls rolled the dice on a journey into the unknown, leaving Africa with nothing but courage and a tiny gene pool. We survived both, but just barely. The takeaway? Diversity saves lives. Numbers matter and no species, not even us, is immune to extinction. Today our threats don't come from glaciers or super volcanoes, they come from us. Nuclear weapons, global pandemics, climate disruption, ecosystems on the edge, and even though there are billions of us now, numbers alone aren't enough. Survival isn't about how many people are alive, it's about how resilient we are how adaptable, how diverse our genetic deck really is. Could the next global shock, one we create, trigger another bottleneck? Absolutely. That's why these ancient survival stories matter, because their echoes still live inside of us, in our blood, in our bones, in our memory. We are, quite literally, a species born of struggle. And in that way, we're the lucky ones. Because other humans, Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo erectus, they faced the same gauntlet, but they didn't make it. Why did we? Some of the answers are clear. A bigger homeland in Africa gave us a reservoir of diversity. But maybe the most powerful force we had was something else. Our instinct to connect, to explore, to share. Because when groups isolate, they decay. But when they reach out across valleys, across oceans, across cultures, diversity grows, and with it, strength. Maybe our greatest evolutionary edge wasn't sharper tools or bigger brains, but the ability to cooperate, to build networks, to pass down wisdom. And here we are, on the other side of those ancient bottlenecks. Every person alive today is a descendant of those who refuse to give up. The 1,280 who outlasted an ice age. The tiny clans who stepped into the unknown. The survivors who kept the flame of humanity burning when it could have gone dark forever. So the next time you hear about genetic diversity, endangered species, or ancient extinction events, remember this. We've been there. And the choices we make now will decide what stories are told 100,000 years from today. If you're still here, it means you're part of that legacy, you're a survivor. And there's so much more of our hidden past waiting to be uncovered. Click on the video on your screen to keep enjoying our content. See you in the next video.